and your brain power. So that next day, when you, after a good night's sleep and maybe a good lunch, a little bit of broccoli, and you're sitting down to, to work on your new project, you give that presentation, your brain power is going to be off the chart. Try it. It's pretty epic. Number four, something I'd recommend everyone utilize when they cook, especially, is coconut oil. You can use butter. You can use olive oil. You can use other but think about adding coconut oil into your diet. You can add it to smoothies, but I'd recommend cooking with it. And the reason why is it actually is one of the best ways to help you burn fat. I think everyone is always adding, looking to burn fat, maybe add some muscle, um, and, and add good, healthy calories to their body and their, and their mind and their, and their brain. Coconut oil, one of the best ways. You can stimulate the fat burning process. We're getting to number five now. Eggs, whether you eat them for breakfast, whether you scramble them, you broil them, you have an omelet, whatever. Eggs, a giant source of vitamin E that fights disease. So think about every time you eat an egg, you're basically saying no, no thank you to those Alzheimer's, the dementia, Parkinson's, all of that. It helps your memory. That's one of the best ways you can help your memory right there is I think it's a crazy study out there that says you can literally eat up to 10 eggs a day. I don't know if you're, you're feeling 10 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. But if you even add one or two into your, your da daily uh, breakfast or lunch, there you go. There you go. I think I'm eating like yeah. four or five a day. I'm, I'm crushing those eggs. We got number six now. Green leafy vegetables. The coolest thing about these guys is just like eggs, they're a way to prevent disease. And so in particular, if you can add a little bit of spinach or kale, and I'm not saying just get a bag of spinach and, and feel like, oh, I got to just force this down my throat. No, add it to a smoothie, add a couple blueberries to your smoothie, coconut oil, some walnuts, whatever, and you got a nice spinach smoothie there. Or, hey, what about making a salad? But instead of using lettuce, throw some spinach, chuck in a little kale, add a little dressing, and you are good for the day. Number seven, one of the greatest foods we can ever eat. And I bet you each of our listeners has had, a, had it once, if not more times in their life. Salmon. The coolest thing about salmon is salmon is rich in omega-3s in this thing called DHA. And omega-3, these are fatty acids that ultimately, again, boost your brain power. Your brain is... is Roughly, okay, the actual brain, the three-pound organism that you load around, you lug around every day is about 50% fat. Isn't that crazy? And so the omega-3 fatty acids, salmon, are essential to keeping your brain healthy. Try it. Number eight, just like coconut oil, this is something very, very small. And a lot of people don't think about when they think about eating healthy or fueling their brain. It's this, you can call it a spice, called turmeric. And I know, Seku, you're a big, you, you, you have turmeric almost every day. I absolutely love that. But turmeric, yeah. the good thing about turmeric, it allows your brain, it basically streamlines the oxygen process of getting to your brain. And so like any organ in your body, every organ needs oxygen especially your brain. And so it improves your brain's oxygen intake, allows you to be more alert and process for information. That's pretty epic. We're getting to two more. I got two more foods for each of our listeners. If you can add these to your diet like twice a week, three times a week, you're going to see life-changing effects. I guarantee it. Number nine, I mentioned it earlier, walnuts. The cool thing about walnuts Okay, they're, they're high in antioxidants, zinc, v, vitamin E, or whatever. But just as we talked about earlier, this allows you to slow down the brain aging process. Again, we don't have the magic pill that says, stop the aging process. You can live to 500 years old. Maybe one day we'll get there. But today, that pill is your walnuts. So get to the store, get a little bag of those walnuts. You can snack on them. You can add them to your salad. You could throw them in a smoothie. 
We've done that. Delicious. And finally, I don't know if our listeners are going to believe, quite believe if I'm, uh, if I'm actually making a joke or not, but number 10, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. One of the best things you can put in your body for your brain. The darker the chocolate, obviously, the healthier. So you get into 70% kind of dark chocolate, 80%. Maybe it doesn't taste as good. But holy cow, dark chocolate helps your focus. Again, this is all these scientific articles. Concentration, mood, it's crazy. You want to feel better. You literally want to be rocking in your conversations and bring your full self to other people. Think about the next time you open up your backpack for a little snack. Instead of grabbing the chips or, or grabbing what you're used to, grab a little bit of dark chocolate. It literally releases these endorphins, these pain killing chemicals in your brain that make you feel good. It's crazy. Think about it. Next time you need a snack, get to the store, get a little thing at 85% dark chocolate, boom, your brain is going to be pretty happy. Patrick, you rock. I'm telling you, this subject is so interesting. And uh, we go through the crisis of the society without paying attention to this uh, part of the body, the brain, three pounds. I didn't know it was that heavy, Patrick. But, uh, you know, we, um, we have five minutes left. We're only on number one. So how about we elaborate a little bit on number two, then we bring you back next month to continue this subject. Number two, I believe you mentioned it was um, interact with others. Can you elaborate that? We got five minutes to go. Of course, of course. A lot of people, when you ask them what are the most essential elements in life, probably 99% of the population is going to say food, water. You got, you got this, uh, there's this guy named Abraham Maslow who came up with this hierarchy of needs. I don't know if many, if any of our listeners are familiar, but essentially at the at the very basic at the, at the bottom of the pyramid, you got the, the food, the water, you move up, you got some shelter, you got security. The top of the pyramid is what he calls self actualization, the idea of uh, creativity, uh, giving the opportunity and ability to give back to the world, and below the peak on the pyramid is connection with other people. But more than ever, and this is, this is my point here, more scientists, more neuroscientists, more doctors, more PhD researchers today in our world are saying that that tip of the pyramid, the most important thing we need in our life is human connection. Because what happens when you connect with a human being? We're, we're a social species. We're social creatures. We need each other. And so when you isolate yourself, when you're not around other people, I don't care if you're an extrovert, you're an introvert, you get energy from people, you don't get energy from people. If you isolate yourself, literally brain neurons in your brain that are expecting you to be interacting with other people, will start to die. And think about it this way. We come out of the womb. We are born expecting our brains are born expecting to interact with other people. I mean, what's the first thing that happens when you are born? You see your mom. You see your dad. You see these doctors. You, okay, maybe you're not consciously, your eyes are open or whatever, but your brain is aware that there are other human beings who are in your vicinity. Our brain is literally created to interact with people. There is a region in our brain called the fusiform face area. Listeners, Google it, the FFA, that literally its job in our brain, we have a brain area that is only designed to process faces. That is how important social connection is. I'm not saying, again, if you're introverted, if you're not feeling the vibe with people that day, I'm not saying you have to go out and connect with people for four hours a day. No. But if you can talk to someone for five minutes, if you can get on the phone with someone, and, and let me be clear, talking to someone in person, giving someone a hug is completely different than a text message. An email is great. A text message is great. 
but every single time you can actually look at someone's face, you can hear their words. I'm such a big proponent and sender of voice memo as opposed to text because simply by hearing someone's voice, something is evoked in our brain. These synapses that allow us these neural networks and connections that allow us to fundamentally live. We grew up as a tribal species. Think about it. 200, 300, 400, 500 years ago, we lived in community. We relied on each other to survive. And unfortunately, in our polarized world today, we're becoming more individualized. But that doesn't change the way our brain has formed. Just because our external world is different doesn't mean that our internal organs have changed the dramatic effect. So think about it. I'll leave you with this. Your brain was created to live in a tribal society, to rely on other people. For survival, you needed to be in a community and you needed to get along with other people. So yes, you might not be living in a community today. You might not have a tribe of people that you are relying on for food and water and safety, but your brain still operates in that same way. And so the best thing you can do for your brain is give it that social connection that it needs and it needs for survival. Connect with other people, get on the phone, talk to someone, hug someone, let someone know you love them every day. Wow, that's very powerful. Seku Radio, Southwest Florida. If you're listening to us today, our guest was Patrick Quinn, who was elaborating on the benefit and advantage of human brain. We're taking deep dive into neuroscience, and we're just getting started. We, we barely covered the first part. So, Patrick, do you mind coming back next month to continue on this uh, journey to learn, learn more about the human brain? I would be honored. You know, every opportunity to share my love of the human brain and neuroscience in general is an opportunity to, to, to share joy in my life. So it would be an honor, Stacey. Thank you so much for having me on today. Patrick uh, Quinn was our guest today on Seku Radio, and the subject was the human brain, the advantage of the human brain, and the deep dive into neuroscience. We're just getting started. If you're interested in this subject, come back next month. We're going to bring Mr. Quinn back to elaborate more about our brain. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Katie. And we see you next month. Mm-hmm.